What's going on? David Page here. Stephanie and I have been posting some live videos from our performances at Houndstooth Saloon, and I've been getting some questions about how we're making those videos, so I thought I would show you how. The first thing I want to talk about is how I record the audio. Stephanie and I both use Sennheiser E935 vocal mics. We've both done a lot of research. We've tried every vocal mic from the $50 to $300 range, and this is by far the best vocal mic for both of our voices. For guitar for this show, I am playing this Gibson Les Paul right here, and I'm using my Sennheiser wireless to send audio from the guitar down into my Kemper stage profiler, which through the help of Adam Instafjord, the bass player uh, for the student body, um, Adam has helped me model the AC30, the Vox AC30 amp that I would have been using on stage if I didn't have this Kemper. From there, I send my signal into my TC Electronic Ditto X4 looping station so that I can put multiple guitar parts on top of each other, whether that's chords and a guitar solo, or if I want to put in some sort of bass line or something like that, um, I've got that option. We're sending all of our signal into my Behringer XR18 digital mixer, and this is a mixer that I use for the duo. I'll also use it for the student body, our full built-out band. I'll also use it for my original project or any other project that I'm running audio for. Uh, because I find it to be a really versatile mixer um, and is really easy to use and the fact that it's all digital is really helpful, especially when you want to multi-track record your sessions. Then I take a USB cable and I take it from my mixer and plug that into my MacBook. And from there, I'm actually able to multi-track record everything into Logic. And I have a template already set up that has the EQ, the compression, the reverb, the delay, everything that I want to make everything sound the best it can sound um, for a live session, it's already there, it's already set up, and it's already saved and ready to go. When I'm recording all the video for our sessions, it's also really important to me that I get it set up quickly and it doesn't take a whole lot of time or effort or energy because my focus needs to be on the performance. So what I'm doing is setting up a GoPro stage right a second GoPro stage left, and then a Canon on a tripod right in the front, a little bit off center so that it's not in the way of any audience members, but it also gets a really nice front on view of the two of us singing. Going into each show, Stephanie and I have a pretty good idea of which songs we would like to feature next. And so we'll stack some of those songs towards the beginning of the show so that we don't run out of battery or run out of space on any of the memory cards. If we happen to, uh, to make a mistake or, uh, or don't feel our performance is up to snuff, we might skip it or we might highlight that mistake as we did in the I'll Be video, which you can see uh, right here or right here. I'm not sure which side it'll show up on, but uh, Right there, and then we just leave the cameras rolling because you never know what you're gonna capture. Once the performance is over, the first thing I do is hit the save button. By then, all the batteries on the cameras have died because we play for about three hours. I hit the space bar to stop the recording and I save the session so I make sure I don't lose it. Once the session's saved, then we can pack up all the rest of our gear and head home. At home, I can start the editing process. First, we'll listen all the way through the show and pick out which songs we want to feature. From there, I'll make the cuts right before the song has started and right after the song has ended. I use Final Cut to do all of my video editing, so I'll find the video files that have the song that we're looking to feature this week in it, and I'll grab that mastered copy of the audio, and I'll bring those into a session. From there, I can select all of the different angles stage right GoPro, stage left GoPro, as well as the Canon out front, and the final audio file, and I'll create a multicam clip of that song. Once I have my multicam set up, I'll make sure I go in and color grade so that all three cameras have a consistent look. I'll set up my iPad as a second display so that I can have all the views really clearly so that I can make sure that I'm making the best choices 
for each different part of the song to make sure I'm really featuring anything interesting that happens, any looks that happen between Stephanie and myself, um, anything that might happen on stage, I wanna make sure that I can actually capture that moment, so I wanna see all those angles as big as possible. One of the things I really like to have in all of my videos is some sort of camera movement. I feel like that adds so much life to the final video. Uh, one of the things I found to be very challenging is when I am filming myself or my duo or my band is that it's hard for me to find a way to get movement in the camera when I am in front of the camera and I don't have a separate person running the cameras. And so what I'd like to do in this particular scenario is use the Ken Burns effect in order to kind of simulate some of that movement. Well, with all that being said, I hope to keep making more videos like this. Um, I'll probably also start making some behind the lyrics, behind the music type of song dissection type videos of the songs that I've written, the songs that Stephanie and I are writing. Uh, I'll definitely keep making the live videos with Stephanie and uh, as I say on stage, uh, let us know if you like what you hear, and if you don't, you keep that shit to yourself. See you next time.